Hey everyone, so if you didn't know or watch UFC 251 happened over the weekend on Fight Island, it was an incredible card, but I'll be talking about my favourite fight of the night, Peter Yan versus Jose Aldo. I'll be breaking down the techniques and tactics used within this fight. So I'll be bringing my brother to help me out with the pads. Uh, Satoshi. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. So I think there were three main aspects to this fight. It was the stance switching, so kind of like the footwork aspect, uh, combination differences, and also the tempo and pace difference between the two fighters. Uh, I think these three aspects were the main things that separated these two in this fight. So talking about stances, they both stood in orthodox for the first couple of rounds, and they were pretty much within each other's range. So they were about a fist distance apart, and most of the time, maybe even closer. So they're very close together, and this meant that Aldo was able to get off his leg kicks. But unlike usual, he was kind of throwing them very low as the trend is going, calf kicks. And this forced Young to swap stance into southpaw in the later rounds to stop his leg getting picked apart. However, before Young was forced to change stance due to the low calf kicks, he was getting an effective right hand off. And this is because he was closing in distance, not just with one jab, but with two jabs, and then across the end. So he would follow Aldo in, double jab, and then cross. As you can see, my back foot is following in, so this meant that he was getting full extension on this cross. It's double jab, cross, and his back foot kind of followed his punch, and later this paid dividends as he changed into southpaw and did this. So, followed in double jab, and then cross, full extension, even allowing his back foot to follow. Once Jan was forced to change stances in southpaw, he often would change stances on the combo to cover the distance and this was a major difference between Aldo and Young's footwork. So he was able to go jab, cross and southpaw, change stance and then jab, cross in orthodox. Holloway does a similar thing and this also was a problem for Aldo but Young was proper putting power into these punches. So he would go jab, Cross, let the left hand lead the step, and then jab, cross, in orthodox. So one more time. Jab, cross, left hand leading the left foot, jab, cross. And this ended up covering a lot of distance and giving Jan a footwork advantage. Another thing Jan did to cover distance in Southpaw was he stayed in stance, but as he stepped, he stepped to the outside of Aldo's power arc. So if you see here, my feet are pointing outwards. This is the range where I can hit you. If I spin, of course, I can hit you that way. But other than spinning, this is usually the danger zone. So when you are fighting in opposite stances, you're always battling for that outside position often. And Jan would do this on the step forward. So step with the jab, forwards and his foot will be on the outside and then you'll throw it across. So I have to actually, if you move back slightly as I throw the jab. So when he stepped forward he would step his foot on the outside of Aldo's foot and it would be around about here so it's almost stepping on Aldo's foot and that meant he could get this cross off and he knew it would land because he covered that distance already. Do a big jab, step to the outside of Aldo's foot and we'll throw it across in from a close distance. And that technical footwork of just stepping slightly to the outside uh, made a big difference in being able to land that shot in the fifth round when you knocked him down. So moving on to the second point of combinations, Aldo tend to stick to one or two strikes at a time. So he would possibly go left body, low kick, low kick, hook, but he's always kind of trying to set up one or two strikes at a time. Whereas uh, uh, Peter Jan, sorry, was throwing longer combinations of more diversity. He was going to the body um, and also he was changing stances as we just covered. And this meant that he just had that slight bit more range of strikes he could throw and he could continue going on for longer. 
once he got in Southport, one cool thing he did was Jan's hands are usually quite high, but then Aldo was getting him with the body shot. So then what uh, Jan did was he threw the body shot in and he would counter off of that. Because once that body shot's come in, he'd tuck his elbow in and that meant that Aldo's side of his face was exposed and then the hook come in. So one more time, elbow and hook. And this was an effective counter he used to start to get Aldo on his back foot. Once Jan got Aldo on his back foot with his combinations and his ability to switch stances, he would flow to the head and also go to the body. So once Aldo started to dip his elbows down for the body shots, which were mostly hooks by this point, he would throw the hook and then he would throw the uppercut Tyson style. So it's a body shot and an uppercut. And the reason for this is if Aldo's arms are starting to drop, but also if they're starting to go wide to tuck the elbows in, as we just discussed, this leaves an opening through the middle. So let's say this side comes down, there's now a gap in the middle for that uppercut. So you've got the body, the elbow goes to the side, and then you've got the uppercut after. And obviously Mike Tyson's one of his favourite techniques. So you go body, and then uppercut right through the middle. The final point was the pressure and the pace of the fight basically. So as the fight went on, Jan started to pick it up and put more pressure on Aldo. And Aldo started to fade. And there were several reasons for this. One, it might be due to cardio. But the second thing is Aldo likes to hit and then have that little break, hit and have a little break. So it's a, an explosive kind of fighting style. So if he's here, he might throw a hook, a low kick cross or something but he's uh, he's doing this and then taking these kind of mini breaks in between to regroup and then fire off again whereas Jan late in the fight wouldn't give him this time similar to what Holloway did in their fights he would start to just keep going and this just didn't give Aldo the time to regroup um, and throw shots how he would have liked to at his own tempo but as you realise in rounds two and three, he was doing quite well at controlling tempo when it was just one, two, or one, and then move. But the minute it became more of a combination and the pressure got increased, um, Aldo started to will on that pressure. Furthermore, Aldo does like to come forwards. He likes to attack and he wants to initiate the exchange. Often if Jan would initiate the exchange, for example when you did the jab cross or the start off with double jab cross and then you got jab cross swap, jab cross. Um, this meant that Aldo was on the back foot and on the back foot Aldo wasn't quite as effective as offensively going forwards. Anyway, if you haven't watched that fight, I recommend you do and if you have time, watch maybe the whole event, it was a good event. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment, share, all those things. I really appreciate it and I'll hopefully see you soon.